y'all thanks for stopping by the obviously the authentic channel my name's leo that's spelled l-e-a and not l-e-a-h and i know this is late <laughs> blame it on school when i tell y'all i got hit with a mac truck blame it on school okay <laughs> um and if you don't believe me let me let's bring it out today i took two quizzes for anatomy and physiology Thursday, I take a microanatomy quiz. Then next Monday, I have an exam for anatomy. And then the Wednesday in the same week, I have an exam for physiology. So I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> but I think I'm going to start um, doing my reviews for Real Housewives of Potomac. Because not that many people watch it, but I still want to review the show. I think I'm going to mash them up. So a two-week mashups. And then I'm still going to keep Real Housewives of Beverly Hills by themselves. But yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, just to let y'all know, we got 100 subscribers. <laughs> that was so weird. But thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Um, all the new people, thank you for joining. I like really appreciate it. And y'all are starting to talk to me. I, I'm the weird person that likes to read comments. I'm that person that's like on like, you know, if you go on blogs and they was like, I'll be back when the comments get longer. I want to read comments. I want to interact. And some of y'all are um, starting to, uh, to comment. So I appreciate y'all. I really do. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Honestly, this is going to probably, like I said, it's a mashup. So, it might not be, but until I get the, alg like, I was going to say the algorithm. <laughs> Put me in the algorithm. But, um, until I get, like, a kind of plan of how I want to do this, um, right now, this video might be all over the place. So, I apologize in advance, but let's get to it. So, Ascala. I like Ascala. I think she's a good addition to the group. Um, she's not too much, but she's not too little. I don't think she deserves a champagne flu. A lot of people are like, ooh, this girl deserves a flu. I don't think so. I still think she is a good asset to the group. I feel like she's more of like a Marlo, which I don't think there's anything wrong with her being a Marlo. Because Marlo, I think Marlo is pivotal with Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like, there's been so many times Marlo's ha Marlo has like start some good beef or get some good entertainment, some good drama. And she's still getting paid. Like, she might not be getting paid what the women get paid for Real Housewives. Like, you know, the, the regular cast members of Real Housewives of Atlanta. But she's still getting paid. So, I don't think Escala has done enough to earn her a champagne flute. But I definitely think she deserves to be on next season. Because I, I do think she vibes really well with the ladies. And it doesn't seem like it's forced. Ashley. Y'all know I don't like Ashley and her ugh, decrepit husband. But, um, I don't know. Ashley doesn't give, like, I know people love Ashley, but Ashley doesn't give me much. Like, I'm with Nikki Star TV. Y'all know I love her. Where she was like, if Ashley comes back pregnant, like, next season, she needs to be demoted. Because I'm tired of it. I really am. I'm tired of her being pregnant. At this point, is that, like, is that the goal? To be pregnant every season? I'm just, um, I'm over it. Um... But I will give Ashley a point. Although I think she shouldn't have brung that mess with um, her and Giselle talking about the Eddie rumors. I will give her credit in the sense of the way that she delivered the information wasn't as messy as she could be. It was still messy, but I like the fact that she told Wendy. Um... But other than that, I don't know. I just like, it's just like, I just don't like Ashley. I don't like the fact that like she kicked up the dirt with Wendy and Giselle, but then she left. I would have gave her more points. It would have been more, would have been fine if she would have stayed. But the fact that she, like you kicked up the dirt and then immediately left after Giselle and Wendy had their argument back and forth. I was like, that's weak. That's weak to me. Like, you should have just said, like, that's weak sauce to me. It really is. It's extremely weak sauce to me. Like, girl, stand in it. Because a lot of people are like, oh, she a bad B. You know, you wreck up the stuff and leave. No, I would have found her to be more a bad B if she would have just stood in it. Like, yeah, I said it. I'm here. Let's see. Like, let's see the mess happen. I just, I don't know. Also, I just don't like Ashley. With a big tweety bird headed ass. 
Um, Mia. Mia is a liar. I don't, I don't, I don't care what none of y'all say. Mia is a liar. Okay. She is slowly inching her way. Well, not even so steadily inching her way to being in the Ashley category. Because this is my thing with Mia. What I'm not going to do. We're not going to play semantics. And we're not going to play this game of like the riddler with your words, girl. Truth be told, you was a stripper. It's fine. No one really gives an F-U-C-K. No one cares. No one cares at this point. She pissed me off because she was on Twitter. And I hate... <sighs> Let me get my thoughts together. Because I was about to say something real wrong. I don't like how Mia, Mia knows she's flatlining on, on this. She's flatlining. We all thought Mia was going to come up here and shake the tables. As K. Michelle like would say. Oh, she's shaking the table. But she's not. Like it was hitting on something when it was like her little beef between her and Wendy. But ultimately Mia is a liar. Mia's a liar and she is a she's cage aggressive and if you don't know what cage aggressive is um as someone who's in the animal health field there are a lot of dogs that you put in a cage and they are very aggressive in the cage they are like lunging at the cage they're growling they're trying to like like bite you and all this stuff but the moment you open the cage they they get scared and they run to the corner of the cage or like they are, are uh, they're afraid of what you're about to do. That is what Mia is to me because Mia be on Instagram, Twitter, and in her confessionals talking big, like big, big mess. But then when she is confronted, she backpedals like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. No, say what you mean and mean what you say. Like, when she sent the text message, which was very rude with Giselle and um, Robin, the moment she got checked or got confronted, oh, I didn't mean it that way. We got on the wrong foot. No, but like next episode, I, I just saw the a sneak peek of next episode where she tells um, Wendy and Karen that Giselle called Wendy a weak bitch. And, but then she's in the confessionals talking about, well, Giselle didn't tell me not to tell Wendy, but now she knows. And it's like, if Giselle confronts you, you're going to be like, oh, I was just trying to, you know, like, you're, she's going to backpedal. And then the, what made me not like her is was uh, honestly was inching her into the, the category of like Ashley is she was on Twitter. Candace made that funny comment where she was like, girl, you was a lady of the night with your big old feet. And I died. Everyone died. And someone on Twitter was like, oh my God, I can't believe Candace is calling Mia a prostitute. And then Mia's rebuttal to it was something to the effect of, I don't even, she was like, that girl's like, you know what? I'm about to find it. Cause I know I, I know I said something. I put something underneath like hush. <laughs> you guys i found it yay i'm gonna screenshot it so we can um y'all gonna see my comment when i put hush <laughs> so the person said at the real candace you call miss mia thornton a lady of the night which is a prostitute was this intentionally t intentional or do you think strippers and prostitutes are the same then mia's like unforgivable i'm sorry but i can't even believe this made uh made the air i haven't said anything about this little girl because she's irrelevant and i'm like girl <sighs> It's your fault people are making inferences about your life, you dummy. Like, you lie. This is why you don't lie if you're not good at lying. Or it just don't lie. Me and no one gives two F-U-C-Ks about you being a stripper. Nene was a stripper and we didn't care. But you have switched up your story several times one minute i was a bartender the next minute i was i was a dancer but we didn't get naked we wore long luxurious gowns then it was like oh it was like you know a nice fancy restaurant and you know we got paid for our time lies then it's oh you know i i know i never stripped my friends stripped and i just learned a little something from them then now on this episode that aired on sunday i'm a stripper what is it, lady? 
Because at this point, if you would have just said, oh, yeah, I was a stripper and that's how we met. No one could make inferences or assumptions about your about your life. That's like everyone. That's like what all the like all the people that I like, like T.S. Madison always says. No one can spray you with your own tea because you tell like once you tell them. That's why she's so upfront with telling people how she was literally an escort. She tells people I was an escort. And she was like, so when people try to throw being an escort and her being a porn star in her face, it doesn't affect her because she told y'all she wasn't trying to hide it. Mia's trying to hide it. And then now she's in her feeling in her fifis and her feelings because she like people are like because candace made a comment about her being a lady of the night what well, was you was you out here selling the ass and if you was no one would care you not selling it down it's just it's just i can't i can't i can't that's why you don't lie you don't lie and then you're lying but then you're angry that it's unforgivable that she calls you a prostitute was you prostituting and if you was as long as no one was forcing you to do it and you did it your, off your own will girl that's a decision you made it's just, uh, she get on my nerves she get on my nerves then candace candace for for the most i said for the most for the most part she's pretty decent with me i told y'all i like candace out of everybody on this um cast candace i like candace i like candace because candace has been authentically herself since the series has started since she's been on this cast she has cried in front of y'all she has just let y'all see the worst in her and still has remained herself like people aren't perfect all the time and then i saw people were on on the instagram and twitter angry that candace didn't really stick up for wendy we've seen how that works out when candace sticks up for people she stuck up for monique when she was trying to defend her um against ashley that's why ashley and candace don't get along because candace had her foot on ashley's neck every chance she got every and i'm happy when she do that i'm okay when she do that but she stood up for she was standing candace was standing up for Monique because Ashley basically said in a lack of better words that Monique was an alcoholic and that's why she lost her child she said that verbatim and Candace was sticking up for her but then all of a sudden once they're friends you casting Candace aside and you assault her then you have Karen Candace had her foot on I said Karen Candace had her foot on Giselle's neck and Robin's neck for Karen because they were constantly coming about at her about race tax issues and Candace knew about all the hard things that Karen was dealing with with both her parents dying within months of each other one having dementia the other one I think had all times like it was sad and you saw what happened Karen casted her aside and tried to get her fired so why would y'all think Candace is supposed to like stand up for these women at this point the way Wendy is moving I wouldn't stand up for Wendy I wouldn't that's not to say I don't like Wendy and we gonna get to Wendy but Wendy is very moving very disingenuous to me and it's just it is what it is at this point I'm fine with the way Candace has acted now she don't really get a point about telling Karen um Ashley to get her milk and leave because Ashley was leaving they made it seem like Candace like kicked Ashley out but Ashley was leaving so wasn't really thing the comment was funny though so i'll give her a point for that one but so far candace has been even killed if we get to robin robin has depression and possible anxiety about failing she has been getting offered big deals from different corporations and she hasn't really been taking them and it's all because she's scared of failing. And my only thing is like, that's understandable. But Robin, you don't have, it's not like you're starting from ground zero. You're on this show. So I know you have some type of income. Plus your hats are doing well. So if they don't do well in like stores, they're still doing well online. Then on top of that, you and Rod, no, you and Giselle have that podcast and people like y'all. So y'all are probably going to start, y'all got sponsors so you have money you have income y'all just finished congratulations to her and Juan they just finished building their house and they moving into it so it's like you're not where you were before when that man took your money and gambled it away and then took his life so y'all couldn't go like sue him for your money back but I do understand her fear but she needs to get it into high gear and figure it out because 
I don't really care about how depression affects Juan because it's Juan, but I care about how her anxiety and her depression affect her children. And I think she, I know Robin would not want to affect her boys in any negative way. So I hope, you know, she is doing therapy and is on depression medication or anxiety medication if she needs it. Um, let's get to Karen. Karen is, ugh, I just, I don't know why y'all like Karen. I really don't. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Karen lies too much for me. Mia is a younger version of Karen because Mia is not 36. Mia is every bit of 49. She a 49 with a jawline. <sighs> she on my nerves. But I just, I don't get why y'all like Karen. Yes, Karen is funny, but Karen is a hypocrite and Karen is so disingenuous, y'all. She really is. And I just, I can't vibe with that. I really, I really can because she has, uh, she's always trying to paint herself as this victim of Giselle when season one, Karen was on Janelle's, on Giselle's neck and Giselle just reciprocated the same energy. And now all of a sudden, now that she can't handle or she knows that the people like her more than Giselle, she be coming for Giselle. And that's not to say Giselle, it doesn't warrant, like, because Giselle has done some messed up things to Karen. Like I said, it's not like Giselle hasn't done messed up things to Karen, which she has. But like Candace said at the table, Giselle and Karen have both done messed up things to each other. <clears throat> and what I feel like is the issue is Giselle and Karen are the same people. It's just that, like, they see negative traits in, in themselves in each other if that's me being completely honest i think they see each other in one another so they don't like it <clears throat> because karen acts like giselle if y'all remember season one karen told giselle that she wanted giselle to take the grand dom title once her and ray were no longer i guess either living in potomac or once they had good you know transition on to the good lord so I'm like, you wouldn't give your title away to someone that you didn't think either resembles your leadership qualities or has better qualities than you. So it's like Karen. And then for Karen to bring up this comment about like Giselle wish death on Ray is a crock of doo doo. It's stupid because what Ray said to Giselle was wrong. Like no man who no man should not be coming up to a woman and being like, you know, you getting old. And like before your looks fade, you should lock down a man. And Giselle's rebuttal was, but Gray will be six, Ray will be six feet under before these looks fade, which is true. Ray is like in his 80s. Ray is going to die before Giselle. You know, if the if the natural progression happens and like, you know, honestly, like nothing bad, like he like no one dies in like a car accident. Or any freak accident or anything like that. But if if it naturally like natural things happen, Ray is going to be gone before before Giselle. And what Ray said was out of pocket and it was out of line. Same thing. And then the crazy thing is like someone found a clip online that Karen, like Karen said, the first season reunion when she was when her and Ashley were going at it, and Karen basically said the same thing Giselle said. Just in a different way where she told Ashley, you better hope and Michael lives that long. So you technically, you was wishing death on Michael. If you want to use your frame, like what you're saying. So it's like Karen, that's another thing. Karen does not know how to take Giselle. Because my thing is like, there's other things that y'all could harp on with Giselle. Like Karen, there's so much other stuff that you can harp on with Giselle. But this whole like... Giselle wished death on Ray. That's stupid. That's mad stupid. So then, who's next? Let's get to Giselle. Giselle is a snake. We know Giselle is a snake. The way Giselle has been moving and shifting around the conversation when it comes to this Eddie's rumors is stupid. It's also stupid for her to constantly be critiquing what Wendy is wearing. In my opinion, do I like the outfits that Wendy chooses? No, because they kind of feel like desperation 
But Wendy is a beautiful woman. So I don't think there's anything wrong with what she's wearing. I think for me that that's off with Wendy is her attitude. It seems like she has changed herself in order to be more palatable to the viewers. And I don't like when people are like that. Like, I want you to be yourself. Like, if, and like, I saw a tweet and I wish I would have screenshotted it to give this person credit. But the person, what the person said was so right about Wendy. But I'm, I'm talking about Giselle. So let me say on Giselle. Giselle was wrong. But I gotta give Giselle credit, y'all. Y'all may not like this. I don't see it for Giselle because I do think Giselle is is tired and through. But I like the fact that Giselle is never really bothered by anything people say to her. She probably could be hurting on the inside, but her poker face is always like, that's all you got? Or like, is this what we doing? Like, isn't it? Like, she doesn't crack really. And I like that about her. But I just feel like at this point, Giselle, you got to find something else. Because it's getting stale and it's getting old. Yes, we know you're the you're the villain of the cast, but it's like it's not you're not a good villain at it because we know what you're gonna do. We know you're gonna talk about mess, the rumors and stuff like that. So it's just like it's not really doing nothing. But I also think she doesn't care either. So like people being mad at her does not do it for her. So she's not gonna change who she is, which I kind of like that too because it's like when you came on the show being yourself be yourself and then miss wendy <sighs> wendy 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 y'all i like wendy i do so i hope what i'm about to say isn't like too harsh but wendy is annoying to me now because that whole you know karen poured into me that's a crock of shit it really is because the only reason why Karen is cool with Wendy is because Karen doesn't have anybody anymore. She doesn't have anybody anymore. If you if you really really look at like the the table of what we of the cast that we have, Robin's always going to ride for Giselle. Ashley is going to ride with Giselle and Robin. Then you have a scholar who is like neutral, really, but she's Robin's friend, so she automatically is over there with them. Then you have Mia, who is a flip flopper, so you can't really gauge whether she's gonna be on your side or not. So, like, I wouldn't even put her on Karen's side because one minute she's down with Karen, the next minute she's not. Then you have Wendy, who was on can was on Giselle's side, but now she is migrated over to Karen and then you got Candace who's just in her own bubble and doing her which is the best thing to do because Karen lost her like if Karen would have like had Candace's back she wouldn't be trying to grasp on to Wendy and Wendy's dumb in my opinion as smart as Wendy is she's dumb because it's like can you not see or maybe you do see and like that tweet I was saying previously Someone said what Wendy is doing is going to backfire because she's only getting fan love because she has associated herself with Karen. The moment she breaks from Karen, no one, all those people that like kick it with her are going to turn their backs on her. So she's not creating a fan base solely on herself. She's creating a fan base because she has shifted to Karen and she's going up against Giselle. Granted, what she said to Giselle... It didn't hit for me, y'all. It really didn't. Like, I thought it was delayed. I thought it was tired. Like, the energy she gave Giselle, I, like, I appreciate it because it was direct and it was concise and it was really like, don't play with me. But the way she was coming off to Giselle, it felt forced and it felt rehearsed. And it wasn't like, it didn't roll off the tongue. The only person on Potomac's cast who be getting people together and cutting to the white meat is Candace. But y'all don't like Candace because she cut to the white meat. But y'all want them to give better reads. So it's like, y'all don't, y'all, you can't win for lose when it comes to the fans of Roa. No, not Roa, but R-H-O-P. And that's my thing. I like Wendy, but I, like I said, I think Wendy is trying to make herself more likable by associating with Karen. And granted, just because Wendy is dressing sexy does not diminish her, um, her educational accolades or her brain. She can still be smart and sexy. I just think, I don't know if Giselle or Robin can articulate why they don't really see it for Wendy right now. 
I just genuinely think that Wendy is trying to be more likable. So she's going over there with Karen because, <coughs> excuse me, y'all. I ain't got nothing. My throat is dry. Um, I should have got some water. But yeah, I just, I don't know, y'all. Yeah, I just, I, I don't want Wendy to get played, but I can see Wendy getting played next season. Or maybe two seasons from down the line. Because Karen is going to shift to the side. Like, if they get another housewife and say that housewife is like, doesn't like Wendy, but is cool with Karen and the fans love that housewife more than they like Wendy, she's going to push Wendy to the side and go with that housewife. So to me, it's stupid. It's stupid because I think Wendy is setting herself up for failure. But yeah, y'all, that's really my thoughts about those two episodes. Let me know what y'all think. Drop down in the comments below. But remember to be bravely authentic. And I'm out, y'all. Deuces.